I'm Allison. I'm at Books and Books in Coral Gables, Florida, and I'm reading from 1984 by George Orwell. A shrill trumpet call had pierced the air. It was a bulletin, victory. It always meant victory when a trumpet call preceded the news. A sort of electric drill ran through the cafe. Even the waiters had started and pricked up their ears. The trumpet call had let loose an enormous volume of noise. Already an excited roar was gabbling from the telescreen, but even as it started, it was almost drowned by a roar of cheering from outside. The news had run round the streets like magic. He could just hear enough of what was issuing from the telescreen to realize that it had all happened, as he had foreseen. A vast seaborne armada had secretly assembled a sudden blow to the enemy's rear, the white arrow tearing across the tail of the plaque. Fragments of triumphant phrases pushed themselves through the din. Vast strategic maneuver, perfect coordination, utter rout, Half a million prisoners, complete demoralization, control of the whole of Africa, bring the war within measurable distance of its end victory, greatest victory in human history, victory, victory, victory. Under the table, Winston's feet made convulsive movements. He had not stirred from his seat, but in his mind he was running swiftly. And he, he was with the crowds outside, cheering himself deaf. He looked up at the portrait of Big Brother, the colossus that bestrode the world, the rock against which the hordes of Asia dashed themselves in vain. He thought how ten minutes ago, yes, only ten minutes, there had been equivocation in his heart as he wondered whether the news from the front would be a victory or defeat. Ah, it was more than an Eurasian, Eurasian army that had perished. Much had changed in him since that first day in the Ministry of Love, but the final indispensable healing change had never happened until this moment. The voice from the telescreen was still pouring forth its tale of prisoners and booty and slaughter, but the shouting outside had died down a little. The waiters were turning back to their work. One of them approached with a gin bottle. Winston, sitting in a blissful dream, paid no attention as his glass was filled up. He was not running or cheering any longer. He was back in the ministry of love. With everything forgiven, his soul white as snow. He was in the public dock, confessing everything, implicating everybody. He was walking down the white tiled corridor with the feeling of walking in sunlight, an armed guard at his back. The long hope for bullet was entering his brain. He gazed up at the enormous face. Forty years it had taken him to learn what kind of smile was hidden beneath the dark mustache. O oh, cruel, needless misunderstanding, O oh, stubborn, self-willed exile from the loving breast. Two gin-scented tears trickled down the side of his nose. But it was all right. Everything was all right. The struggle was finished. He had won the victory over himself. He loved Big Brother.